Hello, thank you for stopping by my channel. Thank you for watching this video. In this video, I'll be showing in simple step how you can run a stochastic frontier production analysis using Stata. So, uh, what you can see on my screen currently is the Stata interface. So, once you launch your Stata, this is the first uh, interface you see. So, first thing I want to do on my Stata is to set my working directory. So I'll use the simple command cd, then of course I'll go to where the file is, then I'll copy the five parts. So this is the five parts. I'll copy as parts. So what I'm doing here is just to set my working directory. That is where all anything I save, what I'll be doing is where everything is saved. So I've set my working directory. I want to set more of the essence of this is to make sure that all my results are displayed at once and to clear all and just to look, set the refresh data memory. Then, next now to do is to bring the data sets. I will use the command use. I go back again and open the folder. This is the data set is currently saved in data file. So, I'll copy as part as well. You go to the document, hold down the control, the shift button, right click, and you copy as part. I come back and uh, I paste it. So, you know, what that's it, the, the top for far, far right, you can see it was empty before, now I have the data set. Next thing I want to do is to log, and to log using uh, stochastic frontier production analysis. So enter. So that's what I'll be using to save my results. Then I want to take the summary statistics of all the data sets. So, so that will just show me. I just want to quickly check if all my variables have the same observation. So the first thing I will do now is to run the, the first part of the model so that I can see, I can get my lambda. So I will say I'll use the command frontier. Uh, frontier. So it's frontier. The first thing frontier. You put your dependent variable then the independent variables together. Yeah, you just need this. You okay? Frontier. Dependent variable then independent. And then of course you tap enter key. So. Have it on my screen. I want to run that again so that you understand from it here. You just tap the dependent variable first, then of course followed by the independent variables. Enter. So that's that. So my lambda, you can see my lambda, which is the core, one of the major uh, uh, statistic of stochastic frontier production analysis. It must be more than one. At the worst case, 0 0.999, so you know it's approximately one. Then, of course, my model is concave. I can see we are all our positive coefficients. All right, so I want to predict my TE, so I'll say predict. Let me call the variable TF, TE. So predict a new variable TF, because that's technical efficiency. So when you look at this part, I don't have that variable. So once I click on enter now, the new variable is generated. So you see that that's a new variable. I want to take the summary of this the summary sum T E. So you click on enter. So that is the summary. So you see this is the main technical efficiency and of course the minimum and maximum. Now I want to run the simultaneous model that has both the production function, the Cook Douglas and the inefficiency component. That is both the frontier, the first part of the model, and the second part of the model. So I'll say frontier. I'll just copy this command and paste. So what I have here now is, of course, frontier. By the first model I ran, it's still the same thing to this one. This is what is not different. This is the inefficiency part of the model. And of course, all the in all the socioeconomic characteristics that was hypothesized to influence technical efficiency or technical efficiency in your model when I click on enter once I click on enter you see the model as 
it run successfully. So this is the first part of the model. We did that before, but now we don't have the lambda again. So that's the essence of running it the first time without having the uh, inefficiency command. So now this inefficient command. Of course, you look at the z values to pick the variables that are significant and insignificant. So that is the result. So the next thing I do is to close my log. So log close. So I've saved the result. Now that's just the simple step to run the classic contract production analysis. Now thank you for watching this video. If you, the video was useful to you, kindly hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more important uh, analytical process. Thank you.